Welcome to our lecture online. Another way in which we can express the exponential function, and we mean the natural exponential function, that means with the base e, the constant e, is as an infinite series. We can write that e to the x can be written as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n divided by n factorial. So when we then write that out, notice when n is equal to 0, x to the n power, so x to the 0 power would be 1, and 0 factorial is 1 by definition, so 1 divided by 1 would be 1. When n becomes 1, x to the 1 power, that would simply be x, and 1 factorial is still 1, so it would be x divided by 1, which is x. When n becomes 2, x to the second power, that's x squared, and 2 factorial would be, of course, 2 factorial, and then we get x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, all the, all the way out to x to the n power divided, or x to the infinity power divided by 4, uh, uh, the uh, infinity factorial, of course, that would be undefined. We don't, want any, we don't need to go that far in our infinite series. So let's go ahead and see if that number does indeed add up to what we know. So for example, we know that e is approximately equal to 2.718.2818 and so forth. So let's see if we get that value when you let n go to infinity. Well, we won't quite sit around for that long and try to go all the way to infinity, but let n, let's, n, let's see what we get when n gets to be a bigger number. And let's start with x equal 1. So we're going to use the value 1. So we're going to let x equal 1. And when we do that, we can say that e to the first power, which is equal to e, is equal to, would be 1, plus, since x is equal to 1, that would become 1, plus x squared, 1 squared is still 1 divided by 2 factorial, so it would be plus 1 divided by 2, plus, that would be still 1 divided by 3 factorial, which is 6, plus 1 divided by 4 factorial, which is 24, plus 1 divided by 5 factorial, which is equal to 120, plus, and so forth. So let's see what we get for the value for e when we go out to that inf infinite series. So after uh, we have 1 plus 1, that would be 2. Uh, so when we take these two numbers, we get 2. When we take the first three terms, so for two terms, we get the value equal to 2. For three terms, we get the value of 2.5. So you can see that we're closing in the, on our value here. When we take four terms, we have to add 1 sixth to 2.5. So we have 2.5 plus 1 divided by 6. And we get 2.66, 2.666, like that. When we take five terms, we have to add another 124 to that. So we go plus 1 divided by 24 and we get 2.7083, and again, you can see that we're zeroing in on this number. When we take six terms, we have to add one divided by 120, so plus one divided by 120, and we get 2.7166, and so forth. So you can see that slowly but surely, we're zeroing in on the actual value for the number e. Then, of course, if you want to use this very same infinite series for, let's say, e to the second power, so you want to find what is e to the second power equal to, that means the case where x is equal to 2, again, you would go ahead and plug that in here, so that would be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared over 2 factorial plus uh, 2 cubed over 3 factorial plus 2 to the 4th power over 4 factorial and so forth. So this would be equal to 1 plus 2 plus, that's 4 divided by 2, which is 2, plus that would be 8 divided by 6, plus that would be 16 divided by 24, and so forth. And if you keep adding that, you find that eventually, when you go far enough on this series, you'll get the value for e to the second power. Now, what would e to the second power be? Well, we take this number squared and see what we get. Uh, usually on your calculator, you have an e to the x button. So you can go 1, press e to the x button, which gives you the, the natural number e to probably 8 or 9 or 10 decimal places. And now if you square that number, then eventually this should add up to 7.3890. Uh, and so forth. So you can see that would be equal to the natural number squared. 
So, another representation of the exponential function can simply be done by making it into an infinite series. If you want to then use that infinite series to find out what the value of e is equal to, you can go ahead and do that by letting x equal 1. If you then want to evaluate the exponential function for any value of x, you simply plug in the value for x, and then you work out the infinite series to get that equivalent value. Now, of course, in practical reasons, you just grab a calculator, plug in a few numbers, push the button equals, and you get the exact answer, but it's sure nice to know how to do it mathematically and where that number actually came from. So another representation of the exponential function and the natural number e. And that's how it's done.